Since man landed on the moon, countless conspiracy theories have surfaced all over the web, some so virulent they spread like a virus, seeping into many areas of the media. Some of these theories, predictably, hold more water than others. Some claim we never went to the moon, this regardless of the proof that has continued to surface over the years. NASA claims to have lost the telemetry from the moon landings also. The motive behind this claim is unclear, yet no matter how unlikely, they continue to claim that it has been missing for decades. Conspiracy theorists often overlook the astonishing contributions which NASA has also made to modern society. Yet some theories actually claim a literal polar opposite of moon landing conspiracies. These not only agree that we did indeed land, walk, and even drive on the moon, but claim we have been back in secret and to explore a rather astonishing thing. According to numerous sources, the most compelling of said claims began on YouTube, with the release of some extraordinary CGI footage of a claimed moon landing and the exploration of a simply gigantic alien spacecraft. Due to the moon being so difficult to reach, and the fact that anything which either crashed, landed, or was possibly even abandoned on the moon, even billions of years ago, would have been preserved in an incredible condition. In April 2007, videos began appearing on YouTube under the username RetireDafB, telling the extraordinary story of a supposed Apollo 20, a secret lunar mission that had discovered the existence of intelligent alien life on the moon. Then, on May 23, 2007, Italian UFOologist Luca Scantaburlo managed to secure an interview with an individual who claimed to be the creator of the channel, a man by the name of William Rutledge, who later claimed to be, in fact, himself a retired secret American astronaut, who at the time was living in Rwanda. Rutledge claimed to be the commander of the Apollo 20 crew and to be the owner of the retired DAFB account. However, the interviewer never met Rutledge in person, as the interview was conducted over Yahoo Messenger. During the interview, however, Rutledge claimed that Apollo 20 was a top-secret mission, launched in mid-August 1976 from Vandenberg Air Force Base near Santa Barbara, California. He also claimed that it was conducted jointly by the United States and the former Soviet Union. He also alleged that other missions were made by American astronaut Leona Snyder, a now-established fictitious persona, and former Soviet cosmonaut Alexei Leonov, the first human to perform a spacewalk. The purported landing site of the mission was near Gaillot Crater, a feature near the much larger Del Porte Crater. Rutledge said the videos show that he and Leonov discovered the remains of an ancient lunar civilization. He also said they brought back artifacts to Earth for study, including a hibernating female humanoid. It is a story which we found highly compelling. There are many mysteries, either yet to be discovered or have and are now shrouded in conspiracy all over the Egyptian plateau. Stories of unexplainable finds, many of which have simply vanished, all have continued to be ignored throughout the years. The several centimeters of ancient sea salt, sediment quietly removed from the lower chambers of Cheops, chambers eventually dug out of the sands of Giza in the early 1900s. There are literally endless theories and rumors which surround this tiny concentrated area of the Egyptians' ancient wonders. There lay countless awe-inspiring sights to be seen all equally unexplainable over the Egyptian plateau, and the discoveries of ancient tombs is not an uncommon occurrence, and although our next area of interest may be of no exception, it is in its characteristics. The outer layers of this tomb was made up of megalithic blocks of gigantic proportions, far greater than anyone can yet explain how these stones were moved, carved, and perfectly placed atop one another all over antiquity. Yet what these stones indicate is one of two things. Either the occupant of the tomb that has now been conveniently easily identified and named as that of Queen Kentakuis III's was indeed an Egyptian queen. BBC News states, quote, The tomb was found in Abu Sur, southwest of Cairo, 
and is thought to belong to the wife or mother of Pharaoh Nepherephri, who ruled 4,500 years ago. Egyptian antiquities minister Mamdo el Damidi said that her name, Kentakuis, had been found inscribed on a wall in the necropolis. Mr. Damidi added that this would make her Kentakuis III. The tomb was discovered in Pharaoh Nepherephri's funeral complex. Yet, as mentioned, this tomb in particular pricked our interest due to its megalithic nature. This so-called identified queen was again either a legitimately aged 4,000-year-old mummy who used a structure already in existence, or what might make her discovery incredibly special is that she could, in fact, be a true descendant of a now lost civilization who were indeed capable of these incredible and as yet unexplainable feats found all over ancient Egypt. Regardless of opinions, we find the facts surrounding her tomb, and indeed her possible true origins, highly compelling. Thank you. 